Hi everybody, welcome back to another Chris Carnomas video tonight. And I've got my special guest here, Ian from One Finite Planet. How are you going tonight, Ian? Good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, I'm not too bad. Um, I'm getting, I'm feeling the warm weather coming in. It's uh, warming up here. So um, yeah, it is warming up, isn't it? I'm happier. I might even take my jacket off. So, <laughs> so. Uh, for anybody who doesn't know, um, I've got a I've got a nice supply of BYD Atto three parts in stock. Uh, I was lucky, fortunate enough to get a big delivery of parts, and I'm trying to sell them cheap. So you can I'll leave a link below to my Shopify store and my stores in Sydney, and uh, I think I'm pretty sure I'm the cheapest in Australia. So if you're interested in any sort of uh, accessories for your BYD Atto 3 or BYD Dolphin Frunks. I have some sitting in my garage. So I'd like you to visit my Shopify store and I'll leave the video, the link below. So enough of who bought you the video tonight. Let's get into the topic. And tonight we're going we're gonna to explore some things about batteries. So um so for anybody who's has the byd at a free they might be interested well they might be interested in some some facts about byd blade batteries and especially lfp batteries which are sometimes a little tricky to measure am i am i right saying that ian yeah well, measuring how much how full is any battery is a bit of guesswork Basically. Yeah, because our phones seem to do it so well. So I don't know. My phone does anyway. When it goes one percent, it shuts down after it gets below one percent. So, so I. You think know, most people find that on the way to one percent, it does a few jumps every now and again. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, those so, jumps are when it's been wrong previously. Yeah. So I've only had my car below ten percent once or twice, and. Yeah, because I don't do a lot of cell balancing, I feel a bit uncomfortable. So, um, so have, have I got a right to feel uncomfortable, Ian, if I'm below 10%? You've got a right to feel uncomfortable, not so much because of cell balancing, but basically um, it depends on the driving conditions exactly how accurate it can be. And, and most people even... Um, limit how low they get on their gasoline or petrol cars and it's way easier you can actually look inside a tank and see how much fuel is left but you can't look inside a battery and see how many electrons are there yeah absolutely yeah so that's one of the challenges of of, of there's many challenges with uh lfp batteries and that first challenge is, is it has a very flat voltage curve and so I might be able to bring up a slide on that. So let's, it, it, yeah. So is that right, Ian? That the LF, LFP, as as opposed to the other chemistry, which is ternary or N, NCM chemistry. Well, it's NCA, different... which is the um, in the Teslas that aren't LFP, and NCM is, and NMC is the um, main um, other chemistry that's used. So, and there's some, some voltage curves from there. And as you can see, the voltage drops more through the charge for the ternary battery. And the ternary batteries are all fairly similar. But you see there's several lines there because on different times you'll actually get a different voltage at the same state of charge. And that first sample graph there yep. is for the same type of battery after different number of cycles that it's had in its life. So over time, the voltage will get changes. And the second one is one with the variation with temperature yeah, on an uh, LFP battery. All right, so that's that's probably going to support the argument that a lot of people notice that in when batteries are in, operating in colder climates, they don't tend to have the same range as a warm climate because if your battery is sitting at five or 10 degrees, uh, that's going to affect the chemical reaction that's going to slow down the chemical, the 
slow down the chemical, you know, probably not slow down, but it's going to affect the chemical reaction. It's not going to be as efficient as if the battery was at, say, 20 well, degrees. It, it depends on the car. Um, yep. But most cars these days, the battery will be at the same temperature um, pretty much, regardless of the outside temperature. But yep. the car is using power to get the battery to the right temperature. Yeah. So it's not so much anymore that the battery's at the wrong temperature than it took, it, it's using some of your charge to run the, heat, the um, heating and cooling systems, whichever's necessary to get the battery to the right temperature. Yeah. And also your cabin, cabin heating has a big effect too, because I think they can run at what, one, one kilowatt per hour, one, or one up to three, I think, up to three kilowatts per hour can be, which, which could be 15 or 20 percent if you're in a really cold climate, going uh, energy going into heating up your cabin rather than <laughs> pushing your car along. Well, three sounds a lot. Three, yep. But, uh, okay. but one's fairly typical. Yep. And yeah. even that, you know, I mean, if you've got a 60 kilowatt hour battery, it means in 60 hours you could be uh, just from doing heating, you could be out of, or cooling, you could be out of flatten your battery. So, all righty. So, now oh, we've got these cycle life pictures here. I notice some people are trying to measure their um, health of their batteries in their BYDs. Is that something that's easy to do, Ian? Say, if you wanted to buy a secondhand car, uh, I know Tesla, it's easy because they have some service options. You can check the battery health. Is that easy to do if you want to buy a second-hand BYD to measure the health of the battery? Um, I'm not sure. I haven't looked at the diagnostics for that one. Yep. I mean, the main one is that even if you've got a healthy battery, that knowing how full it is is quite problematic. Basically, the system in cars and and even in... So even in your phone, the system works by... Because as we've seen from these voltages, that particularly with um, with a good battery that's good for driving, the voltage doesn't change as you use up the power. The more the voltage changes as you use up the power, like it does on the on the um, uh, this top graph that's on the screen, yep. the lower the performance of the car becomes as you use up power. There have actually been some tests where they're trying to do acceleration tests where they go, oh, look, the battery's dropped a bit, so it's going to be a bit slower. You really don't want that. You want the car to be the same performance the whole time. So you want the same voltage the whole time. But if you have the voltage the whole same voltage the whole time, then how do you tell how much charge is in the battery? And, in fact, be it phone or be it um, EV battery, the main calculation is called what they call in the industry coulomb counting which is counting how much charge is in the battery by well what when was it last full what's gone out and what's gone back in since it was last full and the yeah. voltage is only used as a sanity check that oh hang on the voltage has dropped this much then the um it can't be as full as they thought for example or if the voltage is this high, it must be fuller than I thought. So they do corrections. And I don't know if you've ever had a phone where suddenly the battery percentage jumps a bit. Have you yep. ever encountered that, Chris? Um, yeah, I probably have. I probably have seen that, yeah. Yeah, if the battery jumps a bit, it's not... And I've seen people even say, oh, suddenly my phone used 10% of its battery all at once. Yeah. Or, that doesn't happen because if you use that amount of power all at once, it would generate a lot of heat. So you, your phone would get remarkably hot really quickly if it suddenly used power like that. More the issue is that the phone has recalculated what it thinks is in the in the battery. And the same happens with a car. You can be driving along and suddenly it'll jump a bit because hmm. it's revised its estimate of how much power is in there. Yeah, so when we see the percentage on the dash, although it is, it's a probably better a better representation than the 
than the uh, estimated range, in, especially in BYD, BYD cars. It's still it's still a a a, a, the, a calculation based on many factors, and one of those factors is not particularly voltage because, as we can see here, the voltage does not differ a lot between eighty percent and twenty percent. So it's very hard to use voltage as a calculation. You get more difference than the percentage with different temperatures, yep. and those temperatures are the temperatures inside the battery and the battery. That temperature is yep. going to vary from one point in the battery to the other. So you won't know the actual temperature inside the battery at every point. Remembering that yep. a battery is made of a whole bunch of cells, hence the word battery. It actually, the word battery just means a whole bunch of similar things, which is why you can have a battery of tests or battery of guns. Yep. And a battery in a car is a battery of cells. Yep. And, and in a... Um, LFP battery, it'll be typically at least, well, over 100 cells to make up the necessary voltage. And in some cars, it's thousands of cells because there are quite small yep. um, cells. So, so you've got a lot of cells and it's what's going on in each one of those cells. How do you know? Yeah. And overall, exactly. you can do it by Coulomb counting or counting how much charges come out since you saw it full. And the more times you've char partially charged the battery and partially discharged it, the greater the error creeps in in that calculation. Yeah, because so the only two times you know exactly what's in the battery are when it's absolutely full or when it's absolutely empty. Yeah. So when it's absolutely full, it stops taking charge. And when it's absolutely empty, then nothing comes out. <laughs> yeah. So no coulombs, as we say. Well, none left. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Just to, just on the on the thing about coulombs. If if anybody didn't study chemistry at school, a coulomb is the charge on the one electron. Is that Ian? The the in millivolt in be far less than millivolts. But what's the definition of a of a charge of a coulomb? Ten to the minus um, nine something from when I was at school. Yeah, it's the number of electrons in a, a mole or something like that. <laughs> yeah. I'd have to look it up, to be honest. But, yeah, it's, yeah. it's a count of the amount of charge. Yeah, so so when, when, when we mentioned Coulomb counting, they try to predict how many electrons have passed a certain point and they try to count them. Is that a good way of describing it? Yes, that's exactly what it's trying to do. But, of course... The trouble is that the coulombs get used or the charge of the battery gets used. Some of it goes in the internal resistance of the battery, generating heat inside the battery. It doesn't come out. So you, you've got to sort of guess how much is going on there. And when you're charging it up again, the same thing happens. Not all the charge that flows past a certain point gets stored in the battery. Some has lost its heat. So uh, it yes. also is not perfect. Yes, so yes, so that probably leads into an, another question. Another question I have is I've noticed when I charge the DC charger, I have to supply the, the battery with more energy. So I, the, the amount of energy that goes into the battery is probably 10% less than what was given to the battery by the charger. And I'm going, oh, gee, 10% of my energy was lost in energy, like conversion, maybe. Uh, and heat, so yeah, heat. Well, all of it is lost as heat somewhere. Yeah. yeah, so I guess we're already we've already converted the energy to DC. So the main loss is if, if I think I think it works out to maybe eight or eight percent, ten percent. When you go to a, a DC charger, you're going to get into your battery. You're going to get eight or ten percent less than what you paid for because the, that. Um, it varies. It varies. It depends on the speed of charge. Yep. So part of it is that the um, uh, the heat pump will be running to keep the battery at the right temperature part of the time. Oh, That's yep. using up power. Yep. Some of it's even lost in the cable. Some of those cables are liquid-cooled cables. And the liquid-cooled yep. cable because the cable gets hot. Yep. Yes. So whenever we're, whenever we're producing heat, we means where that, those coulombs went into producing heat rather than going into the battery. So yep. not, a, not a good... Yeah, unfortunately, we can't avoid that, but that's just how it is. It's still far more efficient than petrol. 
than, than ice cars. Anyway. Yes, uh, so the whole oh. process end-to-end -end is way more efficient than even the most efficient um, ice engine. It's about double the efficiency of the most efficient ice engine. And the most efficient ice engine is only at its most efficiency under peak load, pretty much. Right. Which means when you're driving through, and unless your car is being driven flat out all the time, it's not using, not it's converting even lower percentage of its of its um, stored energy into um, uh, into motion. Yeah. The, oh, so anybody you know, something like a small, even, even like a 50 litre tank is about the equivalent of a 600 kilowatt hour battery. Yeah. Yeah. When you look at it that way, it's absolutely amazing the energy that's stored in, in a liquid fuel. So. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. So I've just got a slider here. If anybody hasn't seen uh, what a what a BYD blade battery, this is what they look like, and it goes from one side of the car to the other. And I think the extended range battery pack, sixty kilowatt hour. I think there's a hundred and twenty five of these. Is Ian? Does that sound about right to you? Sounds about right in the um, in the Addo three extended range version that we get in Australia. It varies. There's two different configurations, I think. Now, that's in the Addo 3. I mean, in the seal, you'll find the battery cells are arranged the other way around. The seal, the batteries, the cells are arranged at right angles to the way they are in the Addo 3. They're not always across the car. Some of them are, are lengthy. Uh, 